What's up everyone, it's your soul. And for those who don't know, I'm a trained systems engineer, developer, basically somebody who's worked with computing and information systems for my whole life. And yeah, so that's quite a lot of experience. Now this subject of censorship has affected me directly online with regards to Google and Facebook and probably Twitter as well. I've got fairly good evidence of them blocking out my work over the last 10 plus years and numerous different topics. The rest of the world who, let's say, hasn't been so involved in computing and the internet and censorship, ultimately, and talking about controversial subjects, isn't so aware of the extent of what these companies have been doing and their involvement with the government directly. So when stories such as the one recently about Jeffrey Epstein comes to the fore of people's perception, there are a lot of people sort of waking up to this censorship, but there's also lots of claims being made by people as if they know exactly the situation and that they're going to tell the world all about what's going on. But often what they're telling you is only a half truth. And that may be because they just don't know any better, but more than likely, I suspect it's because they have a political agenda and bias. Personally, I don't support any political parties. I don't advocate voting. I am basically for personal empowerment for everybody so that we're all as nature intended. However, I only mention that because that's part of my motivation in attempting to expose what's really happening here with the censorship via Google and so on. The Project Veritas whistleblower for Google and uh, other sites that have come forward slant these things in quite a right-wing way. They, they make out that Google, for example, is a pro-left-wing, as they call it. I don't really agree that's what's happening, and we haven't seen all of the data from Google regards to what they're, with regards to what they're censoring. I think it's much more likely that they're censoring a much longer list of terms, and we aren't seeing them all. And I partially know that because I'm not right-wing or left-wing. I mean, some people might call me left-wing. Depends on your definition of left or right-wing, but basically I'm pro-freedom is what it comes down to. I'm pro-truth, pro-freedom. I'm not pro-left or right-wing, as people would think of it. However, I do just want to remind you that the real definition of left and right wing comes from the French Revolution and the left wing were those who were anti-monarchist, the right wing were those who were pro-monarchy. In my mind, that basically is the right wing is traditional monarchistic, top-down hierarchic systems, empire building, and left wing is whoever's against that. So that could include a wide range of different people who are against that. And many people who are, by that definition, left wing, will disagree completely with each other. But what's happened is, in the last few hundred years, since these phrases and ideas were introduced, many, many people have twisted them, lost track of their origins, and just changed them for their own reasons. And so the chances are, when you hear someone say left or right wing, they're not going to be referencing those terms in in a historically accurate way. And I think that means that we've lost their meaning, basically. So I just want to point that out. However, anyway, the purpose of this video is just to show you some very interesting things that you can find out when running simple search queries on Google and also then comparing it to DuckDuckGo, which is apparently a much less manipulated uh, search engine that respects privacy. And it has a lot of features. You can actually use it to search Google and other sites as well if you want, but it has its own indexing. And that's the key thing. So you can compare the filtering and censoring that happens on Google to this site because this site has a lot less. Obviously, I don't know how much censoring they do have on there. But let's just take a look at some searches which I found to be relevant here and you'll see what I mean. So I've seen a meme going around on the internet that, that shows basically someone typing in the words Clinton space body uh, referring to Clinton body count and showing how Google censors that. So let's just try that first of all. So let's have a look at Google. Clinton body. Okay, so we get Basically, Clinton Body Shop, presumably that's like a car body shop. Nothing else is suggested. Okay, let's try it on DuckDuckGo. Clinton Body. And then here we have Clinton Body Count. Fact sheet, we could all these pages related to actual deaths and murders allegedly attributed, well, attributed to uh, Clinton family, let's say, Bill Clinton, possibly Hillary Clinton, people who have died near to them in very suspicious circumstances. Now, I'm not going to go too deeply into that whole subject. That's a massive subject. It will take hours to go into. Uh, you know, I've looked at the Snopes page about that and it really does a terrible job of allegedly debunking these claims. Uh, but that's not the point of this post. So the point really here is just that 
On DuckDuckGo, it's a, it seems to be a truer representation of the internet in that if you type these two search terms together, it goes away and looks at what are the most common pages to contain those two terms and comes back and says, hey, these are the search terms most closely connected to the word Clinton and body, in terms of, presumably in terms of volume of searches being done by people. Google, on the other hand, has removed all of those and basically just gives you these links back to a body shop. So that's the pattern we're looking at here. Manipulation of search data that, so that the results are not a true reflection of the state of the internet and therefore of the world. They are basically manipulated so that it gives you the impression, well, it might give you a false impression about the world. It might also lead you to not research su subjects, which you probably might want to research if you knew that these things existed. Um, so that's the issue. Censorship is just censorship, really. So I want to make the point here that people claim that the Clintons are left wing. And to my definition of left wing, they're not even close to left wing. Um, you know, as a lawyer, for example, as Hillary Clinton was. You know, that that really is not something that's anti-traditional thinking, anti-empire building, anti uh, even the kind of, kind of monarchistic systems. Ultimately, the legal systems are manifestations, as they are today anyway, are manifestations of of that kind of top down hierarchy uh, and so on, which is why someone like Jeffrey Epstein can hire massively expensive legal teams totally connected into the government politics and get off of, of serious charges, basically. You know, that's not a challenge to the traditional empire building system. That's the same thing. So anyway, let's take a look now at, for example, Trump body. Let's see what happens when we type that in. So we get Trump bodyguard, Trump uh, body language during speeches. So there's more searches here. Trump body count comes up. OK, so we have actually got something related to murder for Trump. And we can see that you know, more or less, it's a similar sort of thing here for um, for Trump in DuckDuckGo. So people have claimed that that means that that Google are you know anti-Trump and pro-Clinton, and it's you know it's it's biased against Trump. You know that might seem to be a fair thing to say until you start searching more damning phrases, because there are much more damning things about Trump. And I'm going to search for some of those, and you'll find that they don't show up either. Hmm. Um. One interesting point here is that if you try to search for Trump Lolita Express, the name of Jeffrey Epstein's plane, allegedly, uh, Lolita referring to uh, media from the past that was a story, basically a movie, I think a book as well, uh, about uh, an older guy who had a relationship with a younger younger girl, uh, doesn't come up and don't, don't go. And, and yet Trump is named on Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs, and it doesn't come up in Google either. However, I would like to point out that if we just search for Lolita, oops, so we don't get Lolita Express in DuckDuckGo either, and we don't get Lolita Express at all for some reason in DuckDuckGo. Um, in Google, we don't get anything at all. We get literally nothing. So Lolita is a watched word in their system, and you know, they're not going to tie into anything at all. Now, you know, I could understand why that is, because I think Lolita is a keyword probably in searches that relates to underage sex, I guess. That's how, that's what it basically means, as I understand it. So I could understand why Google would remove that from suggested search full stop. I don't have a problem with that particularly. But that does also therefore mean that if you search for Trump or Clinton, Lolita Express, then you don't find anything. But here, here we come into the more damning things, right? So if you're not aware of Donald Trump's connections historically to people heavily involved in uh, uh, bl blackmail and so on, then I suggest you read the Mint Press news pieces on Jeffrey Epstein and all the people involved in that case to find out about a guy called Roy Cohn, who is alleged to be Trump's mentor. And you can see photos of Trump with him. And he was a, it's, a, it's a long thing to explain, but he was a guy who was, he's, you know, went way back. He was an advisor to um, Reagan and a lawyer to Nancy Reagan. And he actually was part of the, when he was a young man, age 22 or 3, he was part of the original communist witch hunt in America, the Mac McCarthyism, uh, and actually a hunt against homosexual people in the government, even though it turned out he actually was homosexual and died of HIV. He was a very twisted person from what I can see. And there's a lot of evidence in those pages showing you how he um, he basically was involved in the kind of things that Epstein's been accused of uh, in terms of having parties with young boys and girls and 
teenagers and so on, and then getting photos and evidence of people like J. Edgar Hoover in compromising situations for blackmail so he could build up his power. He was eventually kicked out of the legal system uh, for fraud, as I recall. Um, but there are a lot of connections between Trump and Roy Cohn, and I definitely recommend you check that out. So what happens if we type Trump, Roy Cohn? Oops, Cohn. Nothing. Okay, what happens if we type it into here? Trump, Roy Cohn. Oh, look, the Vanity Fair piece covering Trump's connections to Roy Cohn and Roger Stone, who's also involved in this, Studio 54. All these things are real real um, phrases from the web which connect Trump to all of this stuff. Uh, you know, you can see connection photo. I mean, let's click the photo just so you know who we're talking about. This is Roy Cohn on the right. And as you can see, this is quite an old picture. But, um, you know, these guys were very well connected. And it's been alleged that he literally was um, Trump's mentor. So, yeah, there's a good example of, let's just go back to the main homepage, there's a good example there of, of a search which is damning to Trump, if you dig into the details, doesn't come up at all in Google. Now, in the public sphere, I mean, I'm not aware of any sort of big public story that people could relate to that would, that would lead them to understand why Trump and Roy Cohn are not able to be searched in Google together. And that's because it hasn't fully come out publicly. I mean, it, it, people know about it, but it definitely has never gone mainstream as far as I know. This would, this story, you know, really does start to tie into the core of these things. It actually even goes back to JFK, uh, the assassination, and the fact that Trump has claimed he was going to release all these documents. And, oh, no, no, we can't release all the documents. It would, it would damage national security. Well, yeah, it would, because you'd probably find out that the CIA was involved in the kill of, killing of, of JFK and the beliefs that, people have been indoctrinated within America for decades about America are all lies, basically. So, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know how the hell Trump thinks he can get away with saying those sorts of things and people aren't going to question it. It's just mind boggling. But anyway, in the Mint Press News uh, piece, it also goes into graphic detail about Trump's connections to the mafia in America, relating to funding for even fun, um, the concrete supplies for building Trump Tower uh, through to funding and the banking and all this kind of stuff is very in-depth. So let's just have a look for Trump Mafia. What comes up? Oh, nothing. That's that's strange, isn't it? So probably he hasn't got any connections to the Mafia there. Oh, except for DuckDuckGo says, look, he's got all of these connections that we can find. Let's have a look what it says. Um, oh, look, Politico piece on it. Oh, look, Washington Post. Uh, oh, look, all these big stories from big sites saying, look, let's look at Trump's Mafia connections. But somehow Google doesn't seem to accept that they exist. I wonder why that is. All right, well, that's starting to look a bit more questionable, isn't it? Let's have a look at Trump flight log to see him on Epstein Island. Well, yep, he was on there. So, uh, you know, DuckDuckGo shows that. Let's have a look on uh, Google. Trump flight log. Oh, well, that's funny. Nothing. Hmm. OK, let's have a look at Clinton flight log. Nothing. Let's have a look at Clinton flight log on here. Oh, look. So... I would say that's pretty good evidence that Google's censorship, maybe through some people in Google, there is a, a what they might call anti-right wing tendency. And we've seen that from some of the test. Uh, well, the undercover footage via Project Veritas. That's probably true. There probably are people at Google who are anti-right wing. Uh, but I think the reality that Google is probably one of the biggest, most wealthiest companies in the world. And right wing very much to me, in my mind, is all about empire building. You know, it should tell you that even if it has a lot of left, so-called left leaning people in it, the ultimate concept of Google is a right wing entity. So there's obviously not a straightforward perception within Google as to what's right or wrong for censorship. But I would also point out that it doesn't seem to really matter because the right and left to me are completely divisive terms that don't really reflect reality that most people don't even agree on what they mean. And ultimately, if you've got a company like Google, which seems to have very strong ties to the CIA and other groups like that, and I've seen, I think it was Snowden's leaks or um, someone of that nature who basically said Google long ago gave direct access for censorship to the government. They don't even need to go through courts or to request anything from Google. They've just got direct access to the servers. So it's of no surprise to me that when you've got this child abuse empire, let's say, of Jeffrey Epstein, very much tied in apparently to secret services of various different countries with blackmail involved. There's no surprise that Google is covering up everyone involved 
or covering up for everyone potentially involved. And it isn't really picking sides. It's not left or right. It's basically paedophile or not paedophile. You know, it, it seems like to, to some extent they're covering up uh, serious crime. I mean, that's what it comes down to. You could say mafia or not mafia, but, you know, maybe that isn't a precise enough term. I would just say involved in their secret club of criminals or not. If you are involved in that club, then there's a good chance they're going to do something to try and block information from spreading about you. If you aren't, then they're not so bothered. DuckDuckGo, apparently not as corrupted or perhaps not corrupted at all. I'm not seeing really any evidence that they're corrupted. Um, they do list pretty much all the things that we would expect to be seeing on an uncensored search engine. So at the very least, you can take away from this that uh, we need to really stop using Google as a search for anything, I would say. And let's start dealing in reality instead of heavily filtered, whitewashed, half-truth, false versions of reality perpetrated by potentially criminal corporations. Uh, you know, DuckDuckGo seems to me to be a good place to start. And also something to bear in mind is that when you're using search engines that claim to be independent or respect privacy and that kind of thing, you need to be aware of where they're getting their data from. As I understand it, you know, DuckDuckGo runs their own indexing, so they literally have their own data. You can use it to search. If you t um, type in a, a code letter at the start, so if I type apostrophe G at the start, then that actually opens up Google. And you can do that for YouTube and many other sites, Wikipedia as well. Um, and also just bear in mind here, obviously, as you're seeing here, Google does show you, that obviously they do list the actual pages that you should get for a search for Clinton flight log. It's not like they block all the pages out. They probably do block some of them out, but we're talking here about search suggestion. So if you're somebody who doesn't really know very much about these topics, or maybe you know nothing about these topics, you know nothing, and you're just somebody who's off in your own bubble, doesn't pay attention to the news, and then one day you, you have a thought about Clinton. Oh, I saw Clinton saying this strange thing. I wonder what I can learn about him. And you type in Clinton. Um, it's not going to show you flight log. It's not going to help you to learn about these subjects, basically. That's the key thing. Google markets themselves as being this uh, really intelligent group of people and computing technology that's aiming to help you find exactly what you want based on your intentions. And they aim to sort of help you do that by giving you suggestions and so on. But clearly in these cases, they've decided to not help you do that. They've decided to just be a bit quiet, you know, mm, well, we're not really going to tell you anything about that. You know, if you happen to find out about it and search for it, then we'll show you it but we're not going to give you a tip off. So make of that what you will. And, you know, if you have anything to add to this subject, do let us know in the comments. I definitely am going to be putting out more material on this in the near future. Uh, there's a lot of information to troll through regarding this case of Epstein, and it's really taking a long time, but it's going to be worth it. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed or following me on Steam, Steam at Eureka.org, YouTube, Twitter, do go ahead and follow me there. And don't forget to upvote, subscribe, reblog, re-steam, etc., etc. And yeah, until next time, peace.